What is going on everybody? Weedles Needle here and we are backing in with an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Wi-Fi battle but this video is going to be a little bit different because we are not Wi-Fi battling anyone off my Discord server. We are battling people on Battlespot in doubles because a lot of you guys suggested for me to start doing double battles on my channel. I'm not saying they're going to be like a common thing I'll be posting but I do like to dab in the double tiers every now and again and test out some dank memes because you have double the amount of meme potential in double battles but at the same time you have to face double the amount of triad Pokemon as you can see by my opponent's team. He has a very stacked team because this is the battle spot rated ladder and people try hard on this ladder more than they do on the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon overuse ladder on Showdown. So by the way guys, if you are enjoying my Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Wi-Fi battle content and want to support my channel, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button as it really helps out my channel a lot more than you think it does and it's always appreciated. So we lead off with Malamar and Megalodias as my opponent is up with the uh, Kartana and Cresselia. I should mention what kind of double battling team I'm using today. I actually made a team revolving around the receiver and Power of Alchemy abilities, which on both Passivian and Alolan Muck get. They do the same thing, but they're just named differently. And I wanted to just test out the abilities and battle to see the potential of them. On the first turn, I just go for Draco Meteor against Cresselia because I'm anticipating my opponent to want to go for Protect with this Kartana to defend himself against Latias because Latias can easily one shot a Kartana because Kartana is very frail. We do outspeed Kartana. I'm gonna go for Foul Play here, trying to hit the Kartana, but unfortunately, he does protect himself. As the um, Cresselia does go for Ice D win, which is pretty smart because you can lower my Latias' speed so the Kartana can hit me first. And, you know, it's just good for speed control. So he's going to lower my Mega Latias' speed but he's going to increase my Malamar speed because of the contrary ability. And that's actually going to work very badly for my opponent because I do have topsy-turvy on my Malamar just Ooh, so like go. cheese sweeps can't really happen against me. And so I get topsy-turvy my own Latias. And so now we're at plus two special attack and plus one speed. We're able to invert our stat changes. Not done and now yet. we're able to go for role play, copy and contrary. And so now Mega Latias has the contrary ability. So we can drop Dracos, be like superior and pokey and MD and just get Draco Meteor boost as opposed to drops. And since we're already at plus two special attack because of Topsy-Turvy, it works out pretty well. I really love Topsy-Turvy as a move. I had another battle on Battle Spot um, earlier today where someone used Simple Beam into the Z-Move Komo'o and I actually Topsy-Turvy the Komo'o on the turn. He used the Z-Move and he DC'd on me and I really wanted to post that battle so, so badly. But unfortunately the opponent DC'd against me because he was just so salty that he couldn't handle how he just got absolutely wrecked by Topsy-Turvy. They were gonna drop a Draco, get a special attack increase as now my Malamar is gonna go for the Ghost Z-Move. You guys may be wondering what kind of Z-Move this Malamar is running and we become the center of attention. We do have Z Destiny Bond, which is actually going to work out for me because we're able to redirect any damage my opponent throws at the Latias with Kartana. If he chooses to target Kartana, or target Latias with Kartana, he does go for Leaf Blade, so I'm assuming he was targeting the uh, Malamar instead of Latias. So he's going to knock out my uh, Malamar, but we're able to bring him down with the Destiny Bond, even though he only have one HP left. I was hoping that the uh, Cresselia would target me instead with like a Moonblast or something, but I guess he only has Icy Wind as his best attack to hit uh, my Latias is Psychic. So that's a little bit unfortunate for my opponent. In comes Tapu Koko, which is a massive threat to this team. I do have a Lone Muck on this team, but I didn't feel like a Lone Muck was very good in this game because he had Kartana, and he also had a Celesteel on his team, if I remember correctly. So yeah, breaking the Lone Muck in this game wasn't the greatest call because I also have a Lone Muck on this team. I'm gonna go for Stored Power because we have plus one speed and plus four special attacks. So Stored Power is going to obliterate the Tapu Koko. Down goes Tapu Koko. My opponent's gonna try and calm mine, thinking that's gonna save him, but that is not gonna save my opponent at all because we have Friend Garkle Fairy out. So even if he gets a few stat boosts to damage Megalodias, so we do have Friend Guard which does decrease our allies' damage, I believe by 33%. I may be wrong in that estimate. I don't really know the exact damage reduction Friend Guard gives you, but I know it's a decent amount and warrants you running Clefairy over Clefable, but Clefable is still good in its own right because it's actually bulky and it doesn't have to run Eviolite. So in comes Landry's D, gives me an attack increase which further boosts my stored power base power. Just gonna go for Protect just so I don't die from Earthquake or anything from Landorus T or a knockoff. Gonna just go for Draco Meteor against Landorus T. I just don't wanna lose my Clefairy because it gives my Mega Latias a lot more bulk than it already has already since Mega Latias is already very bulky. Putting Friend Guard besides it just makes it super unkillable. My opponent's gonna go for Combine here with the, lot, with the uh, Cresselia. I keep mixing up the Pokemon scenes. I'm sorry, I don't really narrate double battles very often, so it's kind of like a new thing to me. But yeah, the Cresselia's at plus two speed up. I'm at plus six special attack, plus one speed, plus one attack. Just gonna go for Draco Meteor yet again. Almost knock out Cresselia, but since Cresselia's just so bulky, it just lives a plus six Draco Meteor. It's gonna get all of its health up with the Wiki Berry, and my opponent's gonna go for Icy Wind, trying to do some damage onto the Mega Latias. But unfortunately for my opponent, that's just gonna give me another speed increase because of Contrary. And my Clefairy does have Heal Pulse, so like my opponent really just can't do anything to this Latias at all. Like my opponent actually just gets like clapped 
by this Mega Ladia, and I thought this was a pretty good first battle to show this team using or me using this team because I didn't use Pacific in this battle, but we got to use. You know, contrary to Latias and just Draco Meteor everybody to death. So that was pretty satisfying. And we're going to win the first battle with a 3 of victory against Miguel. So that was a pretty fun first battle. But we are, we do have more than one battle in this video, if you couldn't tell by the massive video link. So we're going to top right into the second battle. My opponent's team is very stacked. He has, you know, Tapu Fini and Tyranitar. He does bring Tyranitar in this game because I do have both Latios and Latias on my team. I mean, you can see that in team preview, but not on the um, team preview screen for VS Recorder because it only shows the four Pokemon you bring. But yeah, we do have both Latias, so my, the fact my opponent did bring a lot of Tyranitar isn't too surprising. So he leads off with Tapu and, you know, Tyranitar, Tapu Fini, and Tyranitar. I lead off with a Passimian and Malamar. So i like 100% sure my opponent's going to protect with this Tyranitar or switch out because staying in and the situation or like not defending yourself is just a really bad play. So my opponent's going to go for the Mega Evolution with Tyranitar because I guess he is Mega Tyranitar. I'm not too sure what, you know, the benefit is of running Mega Tyranitar besides the increased stats. But either way, Mega Tyranitar looks very badass. And I'm kind of fearful of the Tapu Fini being like a swagger set with Misty Terrain because I ran to a few of those um, battle spot and I uh, got clapped by them really hard. And so I'm just hoping my opponent isn't running that set. I'm going to go for Ally Switch on the first turn. It's big Moonblast into Passimian slot. So I'm going to Ally Switch with Malamar to switch places with it so Passimian doesn't get one-shot at Moonblast. Malamar does not get one-shot at Moonblast either as now I'm actually going to go for a substitute and be slower than Tapu Fini. So I was kind of surprised at that. That must mean Tapu Fini is like a very fast variant or offensive or something because I haven't really seen a speedy Tapu Fini at all in my lifetime. Like I've only seen defensive, but I guess in double battles, people run different EV sprites for different reasons. I don't really, you know, battle much in double battle format, so... I don't have much experience in the format, so I don't know why it's Tapu Fini so fast, but either way, it definitely caught me off guard because I was getting Destiny by the Tapu Fini this turn with my Malamar, but since, you know, he's faster than my Malamar and my Passimian, it's not really gonna work out for me. In comes Landorus T to go for the Intimidate, try to lower Passimian's attack stat, but it doesn't work because we're behind a substitute. He's gonna give us an attack increase with Malamar, which is pretty funny. Landorus T is used as often as it is an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon overused, which is very funny. My opponent's gonna Moonblast to knock out my uh, Malamar, die. targeting the Malamar slot as opposed to Passimian because Surprise, he was expecting ally switch, but I expected him to predict the ally switch, and that's why I didn't go for the ally switch. And now I'm going to go for a gung shot. We were able to receive the contrary ability. Gung shot's not going to be able to knock out Tapu Fini because Tapu Fini is super fat, but either way, we were able to receive the contrary ability, so now we're able to spam superpower and get, you know, attack and defense increases as opposed to drops, which is very helpful. And Tapu Fini, I mean, we're still behind a substitute, so I mean, I'm in a really good pit situation at the moment. And, you know, Malamar did its job essentially. Its job is to basically die, so, you know, Passimian gets its ability. Now, in comes Clefairy. I've been Clefairy to like almost every battle because Follow Me plus Front Guard is so useful to have. I know it's not very useful in high level VGC play, but I'm not a high level VGC player or a high level battler to begin with. So, I'm gonna go for Follow Me here as my opponent's gonna go for Super Power. Pretty weird, actually. I guess he didn't wanna knock out his Tapu Fini with the Earthquake, which does make a little bit of sense. But he's gonna Moonblast and he's gonna double target into Clefairy because of Follow Me. And now I'm gonna go for my own Super Power into the uh, Tapu Fini slot and just knock out this massive threat because Tapu Fini actually gives this team a lot of trouble because I don't know just between like swaggering their own teammates and just preventing status on the field which you'll see with the load muck it just gives my team a lot of difficulty and Passimian and Latias and Malamar just don't appreciate fairy types yeah I understand this team isn't very solid like I don't actually battle in double battles to be serious like as you can see by all my opponents like they're battling as a from what it appears in quite a serious manner as for me I'm just using freaking memes for fun because that's just how I have fun in Pokemon, guys. Like, you can judge me for that, but it's just the way I have fun. Now, in comes Tyranitar right here. I'm gonna go for Protect, because I want to protect myself from Heavy Slam, because I want to keep my friend guard active. I'm gonna go for Superpower into Celesteela, because even if it does Protect, I'm fine with that, because, like, I still get... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He either, like, Heavy Slam, Clefairy, or Protects himself, and I, mean, I just felt like, you know, it's my safest play overall. He's gonna bring a Tyranitar with Landers T spot, which is pretty surprising, but I guess I had no reason to Superpower and target Landers T. So it does make a little bit of sense. However, we're still, we still have like plus two attack and defense at this point, and we do have friend guard to give us more bulk. So I don't think my opponent can knock me out or outspeed me with Tyranitar or the uh, top or the uh, Cell of Steel rather. So now I'm gonna go for follow me again. Even if Clefairy dies this turn, it's absolutely worth it because we're able to knock out the uh, Cell of Steel with superpower this turn. As dead down with Cell of Steel, I'm more threatened out by Cell of Steel than Mega Tyranitar in this situation because I want Clefairy to stay alive, and Cell of Steel can easily knock out Clefairy with Heavy Slam if he does have it. So we're able to knock him out. With the superpower, we're actually going to dodge Rock Slide, which is pretty lucky, but Rock Slide does have like an 85% accuracy, I do believe, so I think it's only 90 accuracy, but either way, we're able to skillfully dodge it with Clefairy. Sand's going to expire. And yeah, Passimian and Clefairy are looking pretty threatening at the moment. 
I can just keep following me and keep re redirecting attacks, and Rock Slide cannot break my substitute, so he's pretty much forced to click Rock Slide, unless he does have Earthquake on Tyranitar as well. But he's going to intimidate me, it's not going to affect me, though at this situation, I wish it did affect me because I do have Contrary, but when you're behind a substitute, Intimidate doesn't affect you for some reason. But now I'm going to switch into Latias here, anticipating Earthquake from the Lander's T, and Protect from Tyranitar. It was very obvious, honestly, like this play was so telegraphed. I feel like I'd be good at double battling because people make such obvious plays, but at the same time, I was very low laddered when I did these battles because I knew that this team wouldn't do anything that's high ra highly rated opponents, so yeah, we're going to switch into Earthquake here with Latias. We're able to tank it because of Levitate, obviously, and we, obviously we didn't roleplay Contrary yet. Our substitute's going to expire, unfortunately, but I mean, it took a lot of damage just to break the substitute, so I, mean, I can easily set up another one if I want to. Superpower almost one-shots Landry's team because of our stat increases at this point. This is the power of Superpower Contrary Passimian. And yeah, I really love this strategy because in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, Basimian did get access to superpower. I was going to make this strategy in um, the original Sun and Moon game, but I mean, all Basimian got was close combat, which isn't really that beneficial, but superpower you get the attack and defense increase, so I figured it was worth trying out at the very least. Now we're going to Mega Evolve with Latias, and my opponent's going to go for Earthquake again, actually not protecting with the uh, Tyranitar this time around, which is pretty surprising. He's going to go for the Earthquake and, uh, you know, try and knock me out, but I feel like Basimian is going to take very little damage from this because we have such ridiculous defense dead at this point. And yeah, my opponent gonna go for a role play here and target myself. Though I could have targeted Lander's G to get intimidated and lower these guys' attacks that even more. But I feel like contrary Latias is more fun to use. So we're going to role play, get contrary, as now I'm gonna go for superpower into the Tyranitar slot and just knock out this monster so I can't knock out my Mega Latias. And now it is contrary Pissimian and contrary Mega Latias versus Landorus T. And needless to say, on Landry T doesn't have the greatest chance of winning at this point. Down goes Mega Tyrant Entire to Superpower as my game is slowing down a little bit because of lag. I do apologize for that, but the battle's almost over because this is his last mod. And now I'm just going to go for the uh, Draco Meteor here. He's actually Scarf Landry's T from the looks of it because he outspeeds Mega Latias and they do have max speed on this Mega Latias. So Earthquake's not going to knock us out because we do have the massive defense increase and we are Mega Latias. And it's kind of funny how we're actually hit by the Earthquake because we do roleplay the uh, Levitate or roleplay contra and get rid of levitate but yeah we're able to knock out landers t with draco meteor and that's going to be the ending of the second battle we're able to win with contrary pasimu which is pretty lit not gonna lie and now let's gonna hop we're gonna hop into the third battle here so my opponent has a trick room team from the looks of it i decided to bring shuckle as my contrary user this time around so i did swap out malamar for shuckle on this in this battle because i was testing out both malamar and shuckle and you're gonna see the strategy i came up with shuckle with shuckle and uh Pissimian in this battle so i'm gonna lead off with shuckle and Pissimian because shuckle against the Trick Room team is very useful because you pretty much outslow every single Trick Room Sweeper. We're going to get another attack increase with Contrary. I feel like everyone just spams Intimidate and VGZ, which is what makes this even better. And Pwn's going to go for Fake Out onto Passamian. Very, very obvious because he can just get the freeze Trick Room of his life with his uh, stack attack. So I'm going to Encore um, Strategy and to Fake Out on the first turn because I know he's going to Fake Out 100%. Always going to protect with uh, the stack attacker. Uh, either way, I felt pretty safe in this play as he's going to go for the trick room here to set up those twisted dimensions. But since Shuckle is so slow, we can actually go for Encore against stack attack. And if he doesn't protect here, we can actually get rid of the trick room. Even though he even though he set it up, we can just get rid of it with Encore. So we're going to Encore stack attack. Uh, we're slower than stack attack because we do have zero speed. Gotcha, bitch! And now he's going to go for trick room again to cancel out his own trick room, which probably like tilted him, honestly. That would be really upsetting if that happened to me. As I go for knock off into the uh, Scrappy Slot, knowing he's going to switch out because he's locking the fake out. We're actually able to knock off a Lola Marowak, some Thick Club. And since this is a VGC, you actually have no idea what your opponent's bringing in the back. Like, you, you do, like, see their team before the battle, but you don't know what other two Pokemon they're bringing out of their six. So, I'm gonna go for Snatch here with my Mipsibian. This is where the strategy comes through, as you'll see. My opponent's gonna go for Flare Blitz here on just Shuckle, because I guess the Encore's pissing him off. He's gonna burn Shuckle. Thankfully, he didn't target Passimian there, because if he burned Passimian, that would have been mildly upsetting. But yeah, we're going to Snatch our own Shuckle Shell Smash, and now we're gonna get plus two attack special attack and speed i mean we don't really have any use for the special attack but we're able to snatch our own shuckle shell smash which is very funny a nice little gimmicky strategy we can use and unfortunately i forgot to use the Passimian protect i actually got rid of substitute for snatch and this or on this you know on this team in general yeah i mean they're both tm moves or i think snatch is a move tutor move but yeah i got rid of it my opponent's gonna go for liquidation onto the shuckle i guess that's just the bigger threat in his eyes I don't really know, but he's going to knock out Chuckle with the uh, liquidation, but now we're able to receive Thank and get the so contrary. Much. I definitely think my opponent should have targeted Passimian in that situation, but I guess he was just sick of the uh, 
of the Shuckle encoring him, so that makes a little bit of sense why he did target it down. And I guess he doesn't view Pissimian as a threat because he has like a Raccoonid anyway, and a Raccoonid could just, you know, wall me out. So now he's gonna bring in his uh, Scrap to here, get the Intimidate, which is going to give me a contrary increase with my Pissimian. And now I'm gonna go for Follow Me here with my Clefairy just to redirect any attention brought at my Pissimian. And now I'm gonna go for Stab Superhire and just do a lot of damage to a Raccoonid. And yeah, we're going to get an attack and defense increase, which is going to give us a lot of stats. And now I'm going to just take a liquidation with my Clefairy pretty well, actually. I thought we'd get one shot, but we were able to survive. And now I can just keep doing follow with me. My opponent's going to go for the fake out here. I'm pretty surprising enough as I'm going to go for heal pulse, anticipating him to go for fake out. And I know fake out goes before follow me. So I go for heal pulse, but we actually outspeed the Raccoonite because he's a trick room team. So I kind of forgot about that. So I kind of fucked up on that turn, but it's still fine. We're able to tank the liquidation thanks to the superpower, contrary increase, and friend guard. God, battling or narrating double battles is so difficult, actually, not gonna lie. Now, in comes the alone Marowak. I'm gonna click superpower here and just hit the Iraq one and knock him out because he's obviously the biggest threat here. He could potentially be Z move, but I actually have no idea if he's Z move or not. I've just seen um, Water Yam Z Iraq every now and again, so. Just gonna keep heal posting myself here with my uh, Clefairy at this point, there's no reason not to, as now our Pissimian's back at full HP and we still get a free follow me here to redirect any attacks. And my opponent no longer has fake out, so unless the stack attack does not protect, he has no way of uh, stopping the damage. I'm gonna go for protect on Michael Theory this time around because I just want to defend myself. So my opponent's gonna go for his own protect with stack attack, which is pretty surprising. I wasn't anticipating that. I could just go for superpower and the stack attack. I'm trying to knock him out, but he guys protect. And now he's gonna go for Flare Blitz, targeting my Pissimian this turn, which is not gonna do any damage because we knocked off his Thick Club and we're at plus two defense. And we have the uh, Friend Guard active. And so basically, my opponent's gonna go for the Bell Protect here, and he actually gets it pretty fun funnily enough. And now I'm gonna go for a Knockoff, trying to get rid of the um, Alone Marowak because I don't want him to burn me or anything like that. And I figure at my current defense boost, that stack attack I can't even knock out my Pissimian. I can just keep clicking on Heal Pulse, honestly. I have no reason not to. Um, I could have clicked follow me, but there's no reason to redirect attacks since like, all my opponent has left are physical attackers, and we just have contrary defense boost, so I'm not really that worried. He's gonna give me a contrary attack boost with Intimidate, which is probably really annoying him, but it's actually working so well because everyone runs Landry's T or Intimidate users in BGC because Intimidate's, you know, double as effective in BGC. I'm gonna go for follow me here, trying to redirect fake out, and this is where I found out that fake out actually goes. Um, before follow me. I actually didn't know about that until this battle. And my opponent's able to get up the Trick Room, but it's a little too late for him because he currently only has two Pokemon left and they both really can't touch Pissimian. He's gonna Gyro Ball and target Pissimian this turn as it does do. It still, it does, still has a decent chunk of damage actually, but we're still able to heal Pulse, get all of our health back, add your stack attack at attacks. I mean, it must be so demoralizing to have that happen to you. And now my opponent's gonna go for Drain Punch, target Pissimian. And do very little damage because of the contrary defense boost and friend guard and our superpower is going to knock out stack attack so we are at ridiculous attack stat at this point because we got the shell smash we got the you know the contrary intimidates and contrary superpowers so yeah, we are absolutely stacked at this point. I mean, all pun intended because we killed Stack Attack. Uh, my opponent's gonna go for the last ditch protect for no reason at all, just to you know delay the battle as long as he can. I can understand. I don't know why people do that, but yeah. Between Clefairy and Pissimian, we'll be e easily able to deal with this uh, Scrafty. Moonblast does not knock out Scrafty, but uh, he's going to eat a berry as well. A lot of Pokemon carry berries in VGC as well because you can run like the Figgy, Agua, Wiki berries and, you know, get rid of item claws that way. I'm not saying everyone does that, but it's a pretty easy thing to do to get around item claws. But I'm going to go for Gunk Shot here and just knock out the Scrafty, and we're able to defeat this third opponent with Pissimian yet again. Now let's get into the fourth and final battle using Power of Alchemy alone muck because this this team is so funny man this team is actually so derpy like this is like the true troll of this team like the Pissimian is like a nice meme that's like a low-key good on paper but this meme you guys are going to love it so my opponent has a rain team this time around he's going to leave with Pelper and Ludicolo as I live off with my alone muck and my Ladio so I'm gonna expect my opponent to go for fake out onto the alone muck because alone muck's actually really threatening in the situation so I'm gonna go for trick here onto the Pelper as he actually does, doesn't even go for fake out which is pretty surprising normally Ludicolo is very fake out we're able to give the uh, the um, Pelipper a choice guard because my opponent's going to go for Ice Beam until Latios not do that much damage because we are max HP, max speed because this Latios set is so derpy. I mean, as you saw, we have Trick, Choice Scarf, and Double Battle, so you already know this strategy is really derp. I do have Stockpile on this Muck. No Minimize because I'm not Cannons versus like Verlissa if I don't want Minimize. I think it's just so anti fun I know it's allowed in this format, but Minimize is just so lame to play against. I don't know, it's just not my 
Not my way I want to win. As you guys, if you guys couldn't tell, I don't like winning in like easy ways. I like to like come up with the most unconventional win con humanly possible. It's just like really fun for me. That was I, easy. Thankfully, we're going to dodge a hydro pump, and uh, we actually dodge a lot of attacks in these uh, sequence of battles. I'm gonna go for the memento as my opponent brings in Landry G trying to earthquake my muck, but I'm um, here. We're going to Memento with our Latios and uh, knock ourselves out, but we're able to get Levitate with Power of Alchemy, so now Landorus T really can't touch a little muck at all. We have no weaknesses, and in before, just run weakness policy on a little muck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to Poison Gas, because Poison Gas actually hits both enemies in uh, VGC or Double Battles, which is something I didn't know, <clears throat> but I found that out from testing this team on a showdown. And someone has like a point someone had like a poison gas guard boater and it was pretty cool so i figured i gave a a low and muck poison gas even though toxic is better poison gas just hits both enemies and that's just like pretty oh, annoying yes. to deal with so we're going to dodge another hydro pump here with our uh, muck and which is pretty unfortunate for my opponent i kind of feel bad for him but at the same time i need like any sort of luck to go in my way he didn't have a chance of winning these games so can't really complain and now i'm gonna go for stockpile again because i have no reason not to right and this is where my shuckles um other moves that comes through here with stockpile we actually have the guard split now what guard split does is that averages your defense stat with you with your ally in this instance so i actually invested in my shuckle to have max defense and max special defense and no hp investment which is why its hp stat is so low and my alone mux defense stats are really high at this point like i averaged like 600 defense and 600 special defense with alone mux already decent enough Bulk, and we have stockpiles active, so my opponent has just no way of knocking out my muck. <clears throat> Hydro Pump does absolutely nothing now that he's finally able to connect. And now I'm going to go for Poison Jab here onto Ludicolo, trying to knock him out as we're able to knock out Ludicolo. Again, those Hydro Pump misses probably mattered, but I do have Z stockpile as well, so I can easily get all of my health back if need be. Just going to go for Shell Smash here. Unfortunately, my muck doesn't have Snatch. I'm only the Basimian does, and Snatching Shell Smash in the situation isn't really going to help me. So getting the attack increases would definitely be welcome for sure. Maybe I should run Snatch on this muck, but then I have the 4 move slot Syndrome. And I just realized that like none of my Pokemon have Protect on this team outside of Clefairy, which is pretty funny because Protect's like one of the best moves in VGC. And I'm just like, nah, I don't need that shit. That's for pussies, but everyone predicts Protect, so it kind of like works out. My opponent's gonna go for Rock Slide here, and since we got rid of our decent defense set with Shuckle, we do take a decent amount of damage from that Rock Slide, and we do get flinched. Now I'm gonna go for Encore onto Aegislash and Dissipate, like substitute on like, King Shield or anything really, as we're able to lock an Aegislash into King Shield so it's unable to do any damage to me. And Aegislash is a massive threat to this team as well because King Shield and just, I don't know, Sacred Sword breaks through defense boost, so just Sacred Sword Aegislash can just actually destroy this muck if I let it pop off, so I need to be wary of that. My opponent's gonna bring in the Pelipper to get rid of, you know, Encore lock in. And I really love Encore in Double Battles. I just love Encore in general. It's such an amazing move. My opponent's gonna go for Rock Slide, knock out my Shuckle. But since we already have Power of Alchemy activated, I don't have to worry about Contrary taking over the Levitate. So now I'm gonna go for Knock Off onto the Pelipper. I know I already gave it a Choice Scarf, but I just wanna. I wanted to uh, knock off the Age of Slash and he switched into the uh, Pelipper, which is fine. Knocked off, which is fine. Now I'm able to bring in Clefairy, so <laughs> we guard split it our lone muck. So we have extra defenses, we have plus two stockpile, and, and we have friend guard. So this rock slide is going to do zero damage to muck. My opponent's gonna go for Skull here, trying to status the muck as well, but it just does no damage. And now I'm gonna go for Poison Jab into the Pelipper, just trying to knock him out, because I'm not trying to get Skull Burn, so my damage output's even lower, because right now my opponent is shuffling Intimidates on me, so my muck can't really do that much damage to me. Or to the opponent so i have to rely on poison gas for damage output which is kind of unfortunate i also have heal pulse as well so we're able to heal pulse give our muck all of the health back so i don't know if those misses really mattered in the long run with ludicolo but either way i don't really care um man landry's t was used out of three out of the four battles in this video and jesus christ it has a higher usage in VGC than it does overuse and that just is saying so much like i don't know how it's even possible but rock slide does so little damage and now my opponent's gonna go for Skull, we're gonna protect ourselves with Clefairy. I wanna guard myself from any damage possible with Clefairy, just so I can keep Friend Guard active, just so my opponent can't overwhelm Muck with like Z moves. And so Muck just becomes unkillable essentially, because with Friend Guard, Guard Split, Levitate, and Stockpiles, like my opponent really can't do anything. And follow me redirecting, my opponent just cannot hope that I'll just Muck at all. And I don't really care if Clefairy dies, my opponent misses a Rock Slide. But I guess if you're hitting, or if you're using multi-head attacks, or multi-heading attacks that don't, that don't have perfect accuracy, you're bound to miss attacks like that. I'm just going to double target my Clefairy knock me out, but at this point, I'm not too bothered because we're able to uh, knock out Pelipper with Poison Jab into Poison Damage, I believe. So the Poison Gas is really coming through. Landry's T and Pelipper just being whittled down, even though I'm doing zero damage. We're able to knock out Pelipper with Poison Jab. And I was going to run Curse on this Alone Muck originally, but like people just overwhelmed the Alone Mucks, even with Max Death on both Chuckle and Alone Muck. Just Z moves 
and just Mega Evolution just overwhelm Alolan and Muck at the same time, so it's just really hard to do that, so I decided to give it Stockpile instead just so we can increase both their defenses, and even though we don't have as much offensive presence, like Poison Gas kind of makes up for that. But as you can see though, when we face Steel types though, we're gonna just kind of get cocked because Aegislash has Substitute as well, and so he's gonna like Substitute and try to King Shield to get my attacks at even lower, so dealing with this Aegislash is gonna take a really long time, but as long as Aegislash doesn't have Sacred Sword, he has both King Shield and Substitute, so I don't think he has Sacred Sword. Usually they just run dual stab at that point or like wide guard. I don't really know what Age Slash run. I used to run Age Slash from like VGC 2015 or 2016 when everyone was in Gen 6 because that was when like the VGC meta wasn't completely broken. But it was still like decently enough. It was like still scary, but it wasn't like absolutely busted like with Tapus and Z moves and stuff. Speaking of Z moves, my opponent's gonna go for the Ghost Z move, which kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting Go Z move, that was the last thing I was expecting, and so it's going to stance change into the Z move animation. Go for a never ending nightmare, but we are at plus two and my spadef and defense, and so essentially my opponent really can't do anything to me. Never ending nightmare is going to do zero damage, it does 18 damage, and my opponent just can't touch me. It'll take off a knockoff and it does zero damage because he's holding an item, he's holding a Z move, so, or a Z crystal, so uh, the Z crystal can't be knocked off. And I did speed up this battle a decent amount more than the others because it's kind of stally with poison gas and then, you know, a lone muck stalling out my opponent's entire team. But Aegislash cannot beat me 1v1 if he doesn't have Sacred Sword. And even if he does at this point, it doesn't matter because he didn't click it. He has the King Shield and get my attack lower, but it doesn't matter. At this point, my opponent is going to try to attack me this turn, but it's not going to account to very much because he's going to go for Shadow Ball here. And I, I done this turn just to make sure my opponent knew that those misses didn't matter with Ludicolo. I go for my Z move. I go for my Z Stockpile, which Z Stockpile actually restores all of your HP. So I have Heal Pulse and Z Stockpile, Guard Split, Levitate, like this muck's pretty much unkillable. If I had Minimize on the set, it'd truly be unkillable, but this is the fun Alolan muck strategy with the Power of Alchemist that came up with, and that's going to be the four battles. This is a very long video. I hope you guys enjoy the longer video this time around. If you guys enjoyed the Wi-Fi battle and really or Wi-Fi battles and really want to support my channel, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, as it really helps me out and it's much appreciated. Anyways, the question of the day is going to be: What kind of double battling strategies do you guys enjoy using on the battle spot ladder or showdown or even the battle tree for that matter? Let me know in the comments down below if there's a certain like combination of Pokemon or like a certain strategy you enjoy using in the double battling format. If you don't do double battles, don't worry about it. Like I don't do them either. If you have any sort of like ideas, that, even if they aren't like the most viable, like they can be like try hard or memes or in between, anything in between it doesn't really matter. I just want to know in the comments what kind of strategies you guys enjoy using using and double battles now um recently i, I really enjoy this receiver like the simian slash like power of alchemy muck team but i think the my favorite double battling team i've ever like created i'm not saying i created the strategy either because like creating strategies in pokemon is just such a dumb thing to say like yeah i created this like no it was in the game like obviously someone's gonna think up of it besides you like i don't know why people say that but yeah the strategy that like i enjoy using the most in battle battling has got to be the aura choreo dance team and i'll leave a link to the video in the end screen it doesn't really have a narration into it or in the video but it's like short and sweet and it's like really cool you use like Oracorio and like pokemon with like quiver dance and like petal dance revelation dance fiery dance and i had a smeargle with the quiver dance and transform and so i just transform into my Oracorio and then just spam revelation dance and since you have two Oracorios on the field with dancer they both copy each other's revelation dance and so you actually use four attacks instead of two attacks in one turn and it's like one of my <laughs> probably like one of my favorite like double battle strategies up to this day i also I really love the strategy I made. I, I'm gonna say I made this one because I haven't seen this at all. I used a simple beam Golduck with a Volcarona. <laughs> I simple beam the Volcarona. I made my Golduck one speed higher than Volcarona so I could outspeed it. Volcarona will click Quiver Dance so it gets plus two special attack, special defense, and speed. Then I would Aqua Jet with my zero attack invest in Golduck, give weakness plus two to Volcarona, and then Volcarona will one shot the entire enemy team with Heat Wave. Obviously, that strategy was definitely not foolproof either. Neither was the Dancer dancer strategy, but they're both memes I enjoyed using a lot and I grinded a shit ton of BP with them and the uh, battle tree and battle maze respectively. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what kind of double battle strategies you enjoy using in the double battling format. But of course, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. If you made it this far, leave a comment saying Weedle to Needle is the best female PokeTuber. I'll check you guys next time. Bye.